In fluid dynamics, potential flow describes the velocity field as the gradient of a scalar function, the velocity potential. As a result, a potential flow is characterized by an rotational velocity field, which is a valid approximation for several applications. The rotationality of a potential flow is due to the curl of the gradient of a scalar always being equal to zero. In the case of an incompressible flow the velocity potential satisfies Laplace's equation, and potential theory is applicable. However, potential flows also have been used to describe compressible flows. The potential flow approach occurs in the modeling of both stationary as well as non-stationary flows. Applications of potential flow are for instance, the outer flow field for aerofoils, water waves, electroosmotic flow, and groundwater flow. For flows with strong vorticity effects, the potential flow approximation is not applicable. Characteristics and Applications Description and characteristics in fluid dynamics, a potential flow is described by means of a velocity potential phi, being a function of space and time. The flow velocity V is a vector field equal to the gradient of the velocity potential phi. Sometimes, also the definition V equals minus phi, with a minus sign, is used. But here we will use the definition above, without the minus sign. From vector calculus it is known, that the curl of a gradient is equal to zero, and consequently the vorticity, the curl of the velocity field V, is zero. This implies that a potential flow is an rotational flow. This has direct consequences for the applicability of potential flow. In flow regions where vorticity is known to be important, such as wakes and boundary layers, Potential flow theory is not able to provide reasonable predictions of the flow. Fortunately, there are often large regions of a flow where the assumption of a rotationality is valid, which is why potential flow is used for various applications. For instance in flow around aircraft, groundwater flow, acoustics, water waves, and electroosmotic flow. Incompressible flow in case of an incompressible flow, for instance of a liquid, or a gas at low Mach numbers, but not for sound waves. The velocity V has zero divergence, with the dot denoting the inner product. As a result, the velocity potential phi has to satisfy Laplace's equation where 2 equals is the Laplace operator. In this case the flow can be determined completely from its kinematics, the assumptions of a rotationality and zero divergence of the flow. Dynamics only have to be applied afterwards, if one is interested in computing pressures. For instance for flow around airfoils through the use of Bernoulli's principle. In two dimensions, potential flow reduces to a very simple system that is analyzed using complex analysis. Compressible flow steady flow potential flow theory can also be used to model a rotational compressible flow. The full potential equation, describing a steady flow, is given by, with Mach number components where A is the local speed of sound. The flow velocity V is again equal to phi, with phi the velocity potential. The full potential equation is valid for sub, trans and supersonic flow at arbitrary angle of attack as long as the assumption of a rotationality is applicable. In case of either subsonic or supersonic flow, at small angles of attack and thin bodies, an additional assumption can be made. The velocity potential is split into an undisturbed onflow velocity v infinity in the x direction, and a small perturbation velocity phi thereof. So, in that case, the linearized small perturbation potential equation, an approximation to the full potential equation, can be used. With m infinity equals v infinity, or infinity, the Mach number of the incoming free stream. This linear equation is much easier to solve than the full potential equation. It may be recast into Laplace's equation by a simple coordinate stretching in the x direction. 
Sound waves Small amplitude sound waves can be approximated with the following potential flow model, which is a linear wave equation for the velocity potential phi. Again the oscillatory part of the velocity vector v is related to the velocity potential by v equals phi, while as before delta is the Laplace operator, and a is the average speed of sound in the homogeneous medium. Note that also the oscillatory parts of the pressure p and density ρ each individually satisfy the wave equation. In this approximation, applicability and limitations potential flow does not include all the characteristics of flows that are encountered in the real world. Potential flow theory cannot be applied for viscous internal flows. Richard Feynman considered potential flow to be so unphysical that the only fluid to obey the assumptions was dry water. Incompressible potential flow also makes a number of invalid predictions, such as d'Alembert's paradox, which states that the drag on any object moving through an infinite fluid otherwise at rest is zero. More precisely, potential flow cannot account for the behavior of flows that include a boundary layer. Nevertheless, understanding potential flow is important in many branches of fluid mechanics. In particular, simple potential flows such as the free vortex and the point source possess ready analytical solutions. These solutions can be superposed to create more complex flows satisfying a variety of boundary conditions. These flows correspond closely to real-life flows over the whole of fluid mechanics. In addition, many valuable insights arise when considering the deviation between an observed flow and the corresponding potential flow. Potential flow finds many applications in fields such as aircraft design. For instance, in computational fluid dynamics, one technique is to couple a potential flow solution outside the boundary layer to a solution of the boundary layer equations inside the boundary layer. The absence of boundary layer effects means that any streamline can be replaced by a solid boundary with no change in the flow field, a technique used in many aerodynamic design approaches. Another technique would be the use of Ryabushinsky solids. Analysis for two-dimensional flow Potential flow in two dimensions is simple to analyze using conformal mapping by the use of transformations of the complex plane. However, use of complex numbers is not required, as for example in the classical analysis of fluid flow past a cylinder. It is not possible to solve the potential flow using complex numbers in three dimensions. The basic idea is to use a holomorphic or meromorphic function f, which maps the physical domain to the transformed domain. While x, y, phi and psi are all real-valued, it is convenient to define the complex quantities now, if we write the mapping f is then. Because f is a holomorphic or meromorphic function, it has to satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations the velocity components in the directions respectively, can be obtained directly from f by differentiating with respect to z. That is so the velocity field v equals is specified by both phi and psi then satisfy Laplace's equation. So phi can be identified as the velocity potential and psi is called the stream function. Lines of constant psi are known as streamlines and lines of constant phi are known as equipotential lines. Streamlines and equipotential lines are orthogonal to each other, since thus the flow occurs along the lines of constant psi and at right angles to the lines of constant phi. It is interesting to note that delta psi equals zero is also satisfied, this relation being equivalent to times v equals zero, so the flow is a rotational. The automatic condition 2 psi x y equals 2 psi y x then gives the incompressibility constraint v equals 0. Examples of two-dimensional potential flows. General considerations any differentiable function may be used for EF. The examples that follow use a variety of elementary functions, special functions may also be used. Note that multi-valued functions such as the natural logarithm may be used, but attention must be confined to a single Riemann surface. 
power laws in case the following power law conformal map is applied, from Z equals X plus I Y to W equals Phi plus I Psi. Then, writing Z in polar coordinates is Z equals X plus I Y equals Ray Theta. We have in the figures to the right examples are given for several values of N. The black line is the boundary of the flow, while the darker blue lines are streamlines, and the lighter blue lines are equipotential lines. Some interesting powers n are n equals one half. This corresponds with flow around a semi-infinite plate. n equals two thirds. Flow around a right corner. n equals one. A trivial case of uniform flow. n equals two flow through a corner, or near a stagnation point, and n equals minus 1, flow due to a source doublet. The constant a is a scaling parameter. Its absolute value, a, determines the scale, while its argument a r g introduces a rotation. Power laws with n equals 1. Uniform flow if w equals Arizona 1, that is, a power law with n equals 1. The streamlines are a system of straight lines parallel to the x-axis. This is easiest to see by writing in terms of real and imaginary components, thus giving phi equals x and psi equals i. This flow may be interpreted as uniform flow parallel to the x-axis. Power laws with n equals 2 if n equals 2, then w equals Arizona 2 and the streamline corresponding to a particular value of psi are those points satisfying which is a system of rectangular hyperbole. This may be seen by again rewriting in terms of real and imaginary components. Noting that in rewriting in it is seen that the streamlines are given by the velocity field is given by phi, or in fluid dynamics. The flow field near the origin corresponds to a stagnation point. Note that the fluid at the origin is at rest equals z to at z equals zero. The psi equals zero streamline is particularly interesting. It has two branches, following the coordinate axes, i.e., x equals zero and y equals zero. As no fluid flows across the x-axis, it may be treated as a solid boundary. It is thus possible to ignore the flow in the lower half plane where y less than zero and to focus on the flow in the upper half plane. With this interpretation, the flow is that of a vertically directed jet impinging on a horizontal flat plate. The flow may also be interpreted as flow into a 90-degree corner if the regions specified by x, y less than 0 are ignored. Power laws with n equals 3 if n equals 3, the resulting flow is a sort of hexagonal version of the n equals 2 case considered above. Streamlines are given by psi equals 3x2y minus y3 and the flow in this case may be interpreted as flow into a 60 degree corner. Power laws with n equals minus 1. Doublet if n equals minus 1, the streamlines are given by this is more easily interpreted in terms of real and imaginary components. Thus the streamlines are circles that are tangent to the x-axis at the origin. The circles in the upper half plane thus flow clockwise, those in the lower half plane flow anticlockwise. Note that the velocity components are proportional to r minus 2, and the values at the origin is infinite. This flow pattern is usually referred to as a doublet, or dipole, and can be interpreted as the combination of a sourcing pair of infinite strength kept an infinitesimally small distance apart. The velocity field is given by or in polar coordinates. Power laws with n equals minus 2. Quadrupole if n equals minus 2, the streamlines are given by this is the flow field associated with a quadrupole. 